Particle system is an essential part of every game. It has a big role in increasing the game feel. Without the particle system, so many good moments in games will feel dull. You can create water, smoke, muscle flash, fireworks, snow and the list goes on. So in this video, we're going to have a detailed overview of the particle system in Unity. Unity's particle system comes with a ton of customizations, but we use few of them most of the time. Every customization is grouped in modules. Important modules are emission, shape, renderer and also the main customization module. First let's discuss what are those and then go to other modules. So let's dive into our project. First let's create a particle system. For that right click on the hierarchy then go to effects and click on particle system. Then you can see some snow like particles are rising from a point. In the hierarchy, there's a list of customization options are packed inside some modules. So first, let's discuss some important settings under particle system module. First one is duration. Duration is how much time the particle should emit if the looping is not enabled. Next is looping. If enabled, the particle will emit till the end of universe. If prewarm is enabled, the particle system will act like it's in the middle of a cycle. You should activate looping to use this setting. Start lifetime is how much time a single particle should last in the scene. It's used for determining the number of particles should stay in the scene when they are emitted. Start speed is used for determining the force the particle should have while it's emitted. For example, a leak in the garden hose will eject water in high force compared to natural spring water. It's useful for simulating pretty much every particle effects. Next is start size. It's the size of each particle elements. And the start rotation, just like the name, it determines the rotation of each particle. You can give colors to the particle using this color setting. Even though we have all these features, the true power of particle system comes when we use this drop down menu in pretty much every setting. By using this, you can move from one value to other while the particle system is active. You can pick curve which selects value between two thresholds or pick random between two constants which selects one value from two given values randomly and random between two curves means four thresholds. Important ones are curve and random between two constants. Let's create a color smoke for understanding this. I'm giving the start size as 10 and in the start color I'm selecting gradient and selecting two colors. As you can see the size of particles are big. This looks kinda smoke and the color also changing from one another. Cool. Next we have gravity. As the name suggests it adds gravity to the particle system. Simulation space is a drop down menu. If you select local and try to move the particle system then the entire system moves. Try selecting world. There you can see emitter particles stay there and new ones emit from new position. Simulation speed is the speed of particle simulation of course as the name suggests. Delta time chooses whether in-game time affects the time of particle system or not. If scaling mode is set to local then the particle system will be affected by its own scaling. If selected hierarchy then the particle system will scale based on its own transform. If play on awake is set to true, the particle system will automatically start playing on startup. The emitter velocity helps the system to calculate the velocity using a rigid body component or by tracking the movement of the transform component. Max particle sees as the name suggests, it's the maximum number of particles the system emits. For non-looping particle system, the stop action works when it exceeds the duration. There's option to disable, destroy the game object completely or send a callback on particle system stop to any scripts attached to the game object. Hope it's clear. If you have any doubts then just comment below and I'll try to answer them. Next is culling mode. Culling mode is very important if you are making a performance heavy game. It helps you to optimize your particle system by not simulating while it's off screen. There are 4 settings. When selected automatic, then the looping systems will pause and all other settings will always simulate. 
When pause and catch up selected, the system stops simulating while off screen. When re-entering the view, the simulation performs a large step to reach the point where it would have been had it not paused. Pause will stop every simulation while off screen and always simulate will processes its simulation on each frame regardless of whether it is on screen or not. Next module we're going to discuss is emission. But before that I wanna show you something. Look at this. It shows 95% of you guys watching my videos haven't subscribed to my channel yet. So if you are in the journey of learning Unity or making a game then consider subscribing. Cause I'm in the start of my YouTube journey and I'll be posting more tutorials on the go. So a sub would be awesome. Now let's get back to the video. Right over time sets how much time it should take between each particle emission. Right over distance defines how much distance the system should move before emitting another particle. Burst helps you to make particle emit at a certain interval of time. Next is shape module. It helps you to choose from which shape should the particle system should emit particles. You can choose different shapes from the drop down menu. Emit from helps you to define from which part of the shape should the particles should emit. You can choose from volume, shell or the edge of the shape. Pretty much all the other setting will change while you select different emission shapes. Next is renderer module. It's one of the important module to customize particles. First setting is renderer mode. Renderer mode allows you to choose the shape of your particle. There are mainly billboard and mesh. Billboard allows you to render particle with a 2D material and mesh allows you to select a particle mesh. For example, I can choose default line here in billboard and particles will act like this and when I choose mesh, I can choose a cube mesh. Rest is whether you want a horizontal, vertical or a stretched billboard. Material is the material used for rendering the particles. Another important setting here is minimum and maximum particle size. Adjusting these values allows you to customize the size of each particles. You can check cast shadows if you want but remember that it will take more processing power. Now we have gone through some of the important stuff in particle system. Next we are going to see how we can access these settings and change them in runtime through a C-sharp script. So let's make a C-sharp script and open it in Visual Studio. First we need to make a particle system variable and assign our particle system to it. Remember that you can't access settings inside each module by ps.modulename for example collision.dampen is equal to let's say 1f. This will not work. You should always cache the module before using it. For example var call is equal to ps.collision now you can access each settings from that module. Cool. You can find the list of all the settings you can access by following the link in the description below. I will leave links to all the documentation as well. Next let's try play and stop particle system through script. For that let's make a coroutine called particle play and inside I am writing ps.play wait for 2 seconds and after ps.stop. Then I'm calling the coroutine in start function. Save that, get back to Unity and hit play. Now you can see the particle system is played for 2 seconds and stopped. There's a tendency of enabling and disabling particle game objects instead of using play and stop. The problem with this method is when the particle system is disabled, the already emitted particles will also disappear, which is not natural. So use play and stop instead. And that's it. That's all I have to say about the Unity's particle system. If you want a detailed video on remaining modules then just comment below and I'll try to make them in future. If you want any help from my tutorials then just hop into the discord server and I'll try to help you from there. As always like, comment, share and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video.